Thank you very much for the opportunity you're giving me to present our little story from Germany here in, in Spain. And uh, I have never felt so perfectly prepared in a talk because you have heard everything now already. Why Microsoft, for example, is bad in schools, why data protection is important, why children are especially vulnerable with uh, regards to data uh, protection. So. Um, yeah, I, I will just set on top of this a little story while we all know these things, it is still so difficult to implement a good solution in schools. So just to give you a rough uh, orientation where I'm currently am, I, uh, am, I am in Baden-Württemberg in Germany, it's in the southwestern part. Um, if you have never been here, um, this is uh, a rough overview of what we do here usually in Baden-Württemberg. So we have a <laughs> long cultural heritage, we have good cakes, we have Heidelberg, but we also have a lot of technological innovations. So you all know our good cars that we produce here and maybe some practical parts as well. So unfortunately, our um, engineering skills um, have never made it to the educational sector. So here we are very bad at implementing um, IT strategies, IT products, and I will give you just two examples what happened uh, before the Corona crisis. So we had two really big projects that uh, the first one was called Ella, tried to install a digital education platform um, in 2018 till 2019. That completely failed. So we spent about 11 million euro for nothing. So there was nothing that came out of this project. Would that have been successful? We would have been the masters during Corona crisis because the target was to actually have a digital education platform. Um, we also had a project which was called the ASV. Um, that's an administration back and for schools, just to give you an estimation what, what um, dimensions we're talking about. So this project started in 2003 and was finished in 2019. The initial estimated costs were 4 million and the end costs were 47 million. So we don't have a very good tradition of IT projects in Baden-Württemberg. That's why our uh, Ministry of Education is very reluctant with IT projects and which explains some of the things that happened afterwards. So you see, in 2019, a lot of things happened. A lot of things could have been done that would have saved us during Corona. So 2020, you all know, this thing hit us. And um, as we failed to set up our IT projects properly, our schools were just completely lost in this situation. So when we had to go in lockdown, everybody was just grabbing the next thing that was there. You heard a lot about this already this morning. So some people bought Google or picked up Google, others used Microsoft. iPads were somehow the solution that was used by a lot of people, Zoom, Skype, whatever was there, WhatsApp. Some tried just to run and hide. Um, others had a good solution. And I will show you that later because we had a very good solution that was uh, provided by the official um, by the officials still they did not dare to um, to foster this solution so what the ministry of education did in 2020 they decided to uh, go for microsoft 365 so this first happened more or less behind closed doors but the more concrete uh, uh, the plans grew uh, the more it went into public and so in the summer of 2020, we had a discussion rising on this topic. So one of our teachers associations were the first to raise the issue that Microsoft 365 has privacy issues and um, that is uh, questionable if this is a solution um, for schools. The press picked that up. We were supported by the Chaos Computer Club, which a lot of you might know, which is very um, high influence organization in Germany. So the discussion started to rise during this summer. And as most of you will also know, in summer of 2020, um, we had the Schrems 2 decision um, coming into place where we had another seal that something with this thing might be not okay. So sending data from German children to the US without any special protection. 
You see this guy here sneaking around the corner already because he will come on stage later, but uh, this was the time when he also uh, started to become, to become active and a very important part in this story. So the discussion uh, was raised until we had a level of, we had uh, made an initiative of over 20 organizations that gathered together until the end of 2020. So just to give you a rough estimation how many people we represented with our initiative. So we had the biggest pupils association, which is representing over 1 million pupils. We had the largest parents organization, so roughly about 1.5 million people. We had all the teachers associations on board and we had a lot of more organizations. So this was really the broadest initiative that ever gathered in Baden-Württemberg to um, stand in for a certain issue. So what we did, because nothing happened until the end of 2020, we published a statement and as you can see, we were in the middle of the second lockdown. So we met in big blue button sessions weekly for hours and discussed what should be standards for schools, what should the government do, uh, what should it respect. And uh, you see there is a long list that is published on our website. I just bring you the, the three most uh, important points, which were um, the demand for data protection in schools, the digital sovereignty so that schools do not get um, uh, dependent on solutions that they will not be able to switch afterwards and also to strengthen existing solutions. So what I said earlier is that we already had a very good infrastructure. So the, the Barcelona people might notice this because it's very similar to what uh, Simona and the XNet team um, with, the, with the rest of the team set up. So we had infrastructure, but we also had stuff like Moodle, Big Blue Button, we had messengers, uh, three my messenger um, integrated for teachers already last year. We were still working on some details like document management and editing, so that was not completely in place, but could have been done very easily. So this is what most of the schools already used in 2020 in Baden-Württemberg. So our suggestion was to just um, uh, to just build on this solution and to extend it to uh, all these lacking elements here. But the Ministry of Education still stuck to their uh, plan to implement Microsoft 365. So we thought that raising more public would, would help this issue, but it didn't. Uh, we had elections that was not very helpful, so that shifted completely the focus in our country. But here, now comes this guy sneaking around the corner again. This is Dr. Stefan Brink. This is our federal state commissioner for data protection. So very early, we, we got in contact with his authority to, to give ourselves more grounding in the topic because none of us is a professional data uh, protection person. So they supported us with a lot of um, material and he also, um, was put into place as a, uh, as a consulting person by the Ministry of Education, um, accompanying this process of Microsoft 365. So she, he should check whether this thing is good or not. And in May 2021, uh, he came to the solution that it is not. So he and his team published a very detailed report why Microsoft 365 cannot be used in schools. So um, there were issues like uh, intransparent data flows, um, stuff data was used for purposes that was not um, used for educational purposes. So there were a lot of issues that made clear that uh, this is not a good idea to have. Um, still, it took two months more before the ministry really stopped the Microsoft 365 plans. Um, together with it, they announced that they would um, give us a solution that, is, um, that respects the digital rights without any concrete plans. Um, and we also had the problem that we already had around one uh, quarter of schools running on Microsoft solutions. So although we managed to stop the, the implementation for all schools, there were already a lot of schools there. So we hope that there would be any kind of signal to these schools to switch to a, a legal solution, but this didn't happen. 
So July is our vacation time, July, August, nothing happened. Um, but it also, nothing happened during the rest of the year. So autumn vacations passed, Christmas vacation passed, no statement by uh, the ministry what should happen. So all these children in the Microsoft schools were still suffering from a violation of their data. So after this half year where nothing happened, we thought, okay, let's put our energies back together and publish something uh, new. So we filed a petition at the federal um, parliament asking for a statement on the plans for the digital platform and um, what, uh, yeah, what concrete plans there are and how the digital rights are respected <coughs> in these plans. This was in January 2022, so this year. Until today, we have not heard a single thing of this. So usually you have reaction times from one to two months um, for such a thing. Um, we are now in month six, seven, and nothing has happened. But the press has already picked that up, so we're trying to make some noise about that. Yeah, there came more vacations where nothing happened. <laughs> we were getting a little bit impatient, and somebody else did. Mr. Brink came on stage again. That was in April this year. So we tend to give him this little shine on top of his head because he's the one who always saves us when there <laughs> seems to be no hope in this issue. So in April, he announced that after the summer vacations this year, um, schools will definitely no longer be allowed to use Microsoft 365. But um, there is no official rule he can give out. So he is not uh, able to, um, to really ban it from schools. What he can do with his organization is to go into those schools where people complain about the usage of, for example, Microsoft. And this is what he announced he will do that uh, starting in September this year. And then try to bring the schools to really legal solutions. So this is what one of the only things that really happened during this year. So there so far is no reaction from the ministry again. The plans are a little bit confused about how the digital platform should come into place. They plan to give it to companies because it seems to be the easier way than to implement it themselves without it. And I think that nobody has really checked that. So we asked for, did you do a cost estimation? Did you do a time estimation? On if in case you really implement that yourself, we got no information on that. So it seems to be just taking the safe way, the seemingly safe way, which was not really safe. But in the end, it turns out that in schools, there is a lacking completely a solution. They took away on top of that some of the components that you saw in this earlier graph from the schools. Long story. Um, so that we're in an even worse situation than in 2020 <coughs> almost. And um, those schools who early set up their own solution based mainly on open source components, they are on the safe side because they have complete control over all the data, all the implementations they have. They are relaxed now, but all the rest is really in panic because we only have two months left. Vacation, summer vacations is not the, uh, the most active part in the school year in Germany, so I think a lot of people <laughs> will just go and see if it really happens and who suffers is the children again, because they don't have the proper solution. So what we achieved, we managed to stop the, the official project to roll Microsoft out for all the schools. Um, we also raised awareness for the topic in the public um, with a lot of press work. Uh, at that point. What we did not achieve is to ban any illegal IT solutions in schools. So there is still a lot of schools running these illegal solutions. And we were not able to, to help providing all schools with a digital education platform that works. And considering the corona developments in autumn, in winter, we will have to use these platforms again, I'm pretty sure. So. As we saw how difficult it is to raise this topic on the really small level, on the small scale level, we started to um, seek allies in the EU. And that's why I'm here today, because we got in contact with Simona in Spain, 
We also have contacts to Austria, to an organization who raises the topic there. And we would be very happy if more people could join this thing. We can provide you with material. It is also much, much better if there is several countries standing there and we all have these problems. So please, if you're interested, if you have an organization that works in this field, please get in contact with us so that we can bring together all our energies and raise this topic on the EU level. I think that today we already made a good ground for this. I'm, I'm, I have a lot of hope um, about the developments that will come. I also know that these processes take a long time in politics, but um, I also learned that you have to stay on the line and that you have to follow this until it's really finished. So please align with us and uh, fight for the children's rights. Thank you.